then sure, if I hit it. Um, we'll start with the word of prayer. Lord God, make heaven and earth. Help us to look into your wondrous word, O oh Lord, and to understand it. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. For beside you there is no other God. Amen. The Bible is the word of God, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And this especially applies, again, to the book of Numbers, which a lot of people tend to not um, um, read, because it seems like it's pretty dry, and, uh, but there's, it's part of the word of God, so we got to read it. Uh, the thesis for this study is found in 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So that is what we're taking. Uh, to make holy, sanctify means to set aside, to consecrate, to hallow. Uh, that's that's what that sanctified means um, and we're going to be looking at that uh, that's to make declare something typically a church that word consecrate to declare uh, sacred dedicate formally or to a uh, formally to a religious or divine purpose and so what that means is we we are dedicated or sanctified set aside for the use of God that's what he wants us um, ceremony, dedicate ceremonially assign a church or, or a building to a deity and that's our God again and so this is what um, that's why I wanted to take that uh, um, thesis and so Numbers 3 5 says and the Lord spake unto Moses saying bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest that they may minister unto him. So I want to make a correction. Last week I says I don't know, I just said it quickly without thinking, I think. And Miss, Miss, Miss Margaret uh, pointed that out to me. She says, they did have their names, the names of Moses' mother and father. Of course, I, I taught that in Leviticus. But for some reason, I just said it. Their names weren't given, but they are. So there you go. I hadn't made a mistake since 1970. Yeah, right. <laughs> Unto Moses, the law. The law. I mean, this is amazing. And then bring the tribe of Levi near before Aaron the priest. The whole tribe. And he says, and, and that they may minister unto him. So Levi, the Lord is singling out Levi, and, and these are the sons of Levi, Gershom, Kohath, and Mary, Rari. Uh, these are the three sons of Levi. And then, of course, Aaron and Moses and Miriam, they come from the, from the Kohathites. That's where they come from. Amram and Jochebed, that's where they come from. Um, and so, Again, the Levites are then, they come from those three sons, and then they are brought before the priest, Aaron. And it says, and they shall keep his charge and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation. So they're going to keep the office. They're going to guard his office. And that's the office of the priest. And, and then it says here, and the charge of the whole congregation. So the whole congregation, um, all, of the, all of Israel, they had a, a charge. They were, they were given a, a special place, especially because God gave them that land in the middle of three giant um, continents. They were put in a specific place to teach the rest of us the rest of the world. That's why they were given the oracles of God. Um, and so the Levites are supposed to help them do that. That part, that one uh, tribe. And not only the charge of Aaron, the high priest, but also the whole tribe as a whole. To do the service of the tabernacle. 
these are the, the Levites are going to be doing this um, and the congregation. They're all involved in this thing. The purpose. This is the purpose. So, and they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation and charge of the and the charge of the children of Israel. So, so the whole the whole uh, family of Jacob they have this charge over this uh, tabernacle that's going to be showing up. Uh, it's it's going to it's a teaching for the whole world. But of course they failed. They failed, and so which tells us that if we fail as well, the church is here for a purpose. This we are the body of Christ, and our head is not in Rome. Our head is not in Utah, Salt Lake, Utah. Our head is in heaven, and the body is here, a headless body, as it were. But we do have a head, and it's in heaven. And we're supposed to be doing something. Uh, to do the service of the tabernacle. That's it. We are to be doing this. Um, the whole church, the service, the body. Um, and thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. So here you have the whole tri the the Levites are now in turn being given to Aaron for this purpose, and Aaron is always a picture, or the high priest. They're a picture of Jesus. That's who they, that's who they represent. They were very special. The high priest. You always had one high priest, and the sons would one by one replace that high priest. To, to represent, we only have one high priest, and that's Jesus. So that's what they're going to be. The Levites were to do that. They were supposed to be helping out, ministering to Jesus and to the whole congregation. Okay. Of any kind, work of any kind, that service of the tabernacle, and not put their good works. So we have been created unto good works. Everybody brings their part. Everybody's doing their part, and we... Um, we're organized like that. John 17, 9 says, I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the whole world, not the world, but for them that thou hast given me. And we saw that last week. For they are thine. So here, God has given the Levites to the high priest, which is Aaron. And, and this is what John 17, 9 says. We have been given to Jesus. We, the church, have been given. And this is, this is pretty amazing because this is to, um, we are called. This is not a position you take up. You are called into this position. God just did it of his own accord. He just did it. He selects a people. And that's us. That's every one of us here have been called. And that's his doing. Am I serving my purpose? That's the question that arises. Am I serving? Because I've been called into this thing. Every single one of us here that's a member, that's a Levite as it were. And look at this. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons and they shall wait on their, on their priest's office. Aaron and the sons, they've been singled out out of the Levites. And now, remember, there were four sons. Two of them have, been, have gone. They're gone, the, Nadab and Abihu, because they became liberal. They became, and this shows us that this is a very important task that we've been given. It's a holy, sacred thing, not to be taken lightly, uh, because we saw what he did to those boys. They, they went in there offering strange fire and God burned them out. And the two that are left is Eleazar and Ithamar. Those are the two that were left. They shall wait up upon the priest's office. These are, the, these are the high priests. 
and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. The stranger, that means he's not sacred. He hasn't been consecrated. And we looked, and we saw that in Leviticus. All the big deal that they made, putting the, the, the ram's blood on the right ear, the right thumb, and on the right toe, all that signified how they were consecrated for us. And you, you're gonna see something here that's fantastic. This blew me away. God just gives me a little nugget here and then just to get me excited. But this is so fantastic. We're about to see something here. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, I and I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. So what the Lord is telling us here, he says, I did it. I have taken them. I just did it of my own accord. I took the Levites. Because folks, look what is going to, look what is going to happen here. In Exodus 13 too, we're told, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Whosoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. God says, these are mine. The firstborn is mine. And he tells you why they were his. Because look, uh, we're told of all Israel, the firstborn, every child, every male that is born, firstborn, God says, it's mine. They're mine. And so, because of what he did in Egypt, instead of, the, instead of them, God says, I'm gonna take the Levites, okay? He says, you can, have the, you can have the firstborn back. You don't have to redeem them. Instead of them, I'm going to take the Levites. He just did it of his own accord. He just chose them. What is he doing? And look at this, folks. I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel. They are mine now. The Levites are mine instead of the firstborn. And so, therefore, the Levites shall be mine. He's stressing this. Over and over, he's, these are mine. Now, because, and then he explains how he, got, how he came to this. He says, because, of all the first, because all the firstborn are mine, for on the day that I smote all the firstborn in, e in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Look what he's saying here. This is what they're mine, because I hollowed them. I smote all the firstborn in Egypt. I, he killed them. In Egypt, remember? He says, this night, the angel of death is going to come, and unless you put blood on the doors, death is coming. This is a serious thing. It don't matter. You better put blood on the doors. That affects everybody. The, the Egyptians, they wouldn't do it. They didn't do it. And so the angel of death came and took all the firstborn. And so God, what God is saying, because this is what Cain did. Cain said, I'm going to bring the best, the very best I'm going to bring to God. And God says, that's not the rule. I wanted the lamb, not the very best. But we all think that we can offer God the very best and he's going to be satisfied. Many people think that way. They say, well, when I die, hopefully my good deeds will outweigh my bad deeds. God says, you'll never make it because you'll never be good enough. And so he, he tells the whole world, that's the Egyptian world. He says, no, he took the firstborn, their strength. He took them all. But that thing applies to the people of God too. He says, instead of, I killed them, and now you, I require the same thing off of you. So the firstborn are mine. And then he changes it. Then he says, you know what? I'll take the Levites instead. What? And I think this, folks, I think, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn of Israel. I pronounced them clean. The day that I did this, when all the Egyptians were dead, he says, the firstborn in mine <clears throat> is mine, but then, and I'm saying, folks, that's the best. God is saying, 
The firstborn is mine because they're the best. They're mine. They're not going to be yours. They're mine. So what he's saying, you have nothing to offer him. The very best you have to offer him, God says, forget it. It's mine. So you have nothing in it. And then he changes his mind. He says, you know what? Now I'm going to take the Levites. You can have the best back. Take it. And so, but what is this saying, folks? I think what this is saying is so fantastic. Because mine they shall be. I am the Lord. I've decided this. They are going to be mine. And so when you look at this, I think what he is saying is, saying, is this, folks. We think that the Lord goes through, you know, I'm going to have the best educators in the church. I'm going to have the very best musicians. I'm going to have everything the very best. Is that what he does? No, he doesn't do that. Look at this. In Genesis 49.3, it says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. That was Reuben. That's what Jacob said concerning Reuben. This is the firstborn. The firstborn is the very best. And God doesn't get that. He says, no, because if I get the very best, then the glory will go to them. He says, no, I'll take the weak ones. I'll take the ones, look what he says. You know, he, he does this. He says, I'll sanctify, I'll set them aside. The ones, the weak ones, I'll set them aside. And folks, I, when I was doing the study, I'm thinking, good night, who would have thunk it? Did a little boy that was picking cotton, barefoot, up in Lubbock, Texas, in the 60s. That's me, you know, barefoot in the mud. I'm thinking, how, never in a zillion years would I have thought that I would be teaching the book of the master of the universe. Wow, what a thought, you know. He does that. He does things like that. Not the firstborns. That means these are not the very best. The Levites are not the best, folks. Look what it says here. For you see your calling, brethren, how n that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He doesn't go after the, you know, the Bill Gates, the Steve Jobs, the, you know, he doesn't go after those guys. Wow, look at this. Look what he says here in 1 Corinthians 2, 2 1. When I came to you, came not with excellency of pe a speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, in fear, and much trembling. Paul says, and now Paul is sort of like an exception, because I mean, next to Jesus, the Lord, Paul is a genius. I mean, has, you read the book of Romans and try to pursue that thing. Book of Romans is so heavy. It is, uh, Paul wrote that? Wow. But he's an exception. And he himself says, this is how I came. I came in weakness and trembling. Now look at this. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, neither idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. These are the, the scum of the earth. These are the weak. But look what it says here. And such were some of you. Wow! That's what, that's the Levites. That's what he's taken. He doesn't take the very best. He takes, and so who's going to get the glory? Duh. Duh. But you are sanctified. That's what the Lord says. You were this, but I have set you aside. You have been set aside. You've been consecrated. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, 
Number the children of Israel of Levi after the houses of their fathers by their families. Every male from a month old and upward shall thou number them. Remember, the children of Israel were numbered from 20 years and up. But these, this tells me that the Lord, he knew who he was going to call. He knew, it's, his, it's of his own deal. He, he does the calling. And I remember, I remember in Idaho one time, my grandmother, I heard her say in the kitchen, telling my mother this concerning me, because I was crying because they wouldn't take me to the dance. And they said, no, you're staying home. I wanted to go. They said, no way. And I was by the door crying, and I heard my grandma says, este muchachito trae un don de Dios. I never forgot it. And what she was saying, this little boy has a gift of God. From God, has a gift from God. And I says, what does she know? What you, what you talking about? I wanted to go. But then years later, it's God who does the calling. It is he. It is he. This is what it says from a month old. And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord as he was commanded. That's the law. And these were the, son, and these were the sons of Levi by their names. Gershon, Kohath, and Mary Rari. Okay, now look at this, folks. These are the three sons. Now, this is so fantastic here. This goes along with the, the names mean so much. Look at this. Gershon, a refugee. Before, we have looked at the captains, and the, all their names have God in them. But look at the names of these guys. A refugee, Kohath, to Ali oneself, Mirari, bitter, like Miriam or Mary, bitter, rebellious. These are the Levites. These are the ones that God is gonna use to minister unto Jesus. Wow, that's us. That's what the, that the Lord picks from these people. And he says, and these are the names of the sons of Gershom by their families, Libni and Shimei. Look at their names, white. That reminds of leprosy, sinners. Shimei, famous. And the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram, that's the father of Moses, okay? And Issachar, Hebron, and Suel, Uziel. These are the sons of the Kohathites, the, of Kohath, the, these are the Kohathites. And, but their names, God, once in a while you see a, a name of God in them, but other than that, high people, uh, given light, or seat of association, strength of God, there, Uziel is, uh, stands out, and Mary Ari, it says, and the sons of Mary Ari, M Mali and Mushi, you know, these names, because, I mean, whenever my mom says, how do you feel, son? Ma, estoy malo. You know, I don't want to go to school. Estoy malo. I'm sick. That's what it is. Malo is sick. And mushi sensitive. Oh, there's a lot of those of us, you know, we're sensitive. Somebody didn't say good morning to me, you know. These are the people that God's going to be using. Isn't it amazing? These are the these are the Levites. These are the families of the Levites according to the house of their fathers. Wow, it's humbling. Not the best. These are not the best. He, took, he gave up the best to get these people. You know, these are the people. Now watch this, folks. Now all found Now this is the, this is a beautiful thing. Remember we talked about the captains after chapter 10, you don't find them. And they have beautiful names. But you know what? If you go through the Bible, you'll find all these clowns, if I, if I may say so. Do you find them in the book, in 2 Chronicles? They're in there. First Chronicles, that's, the, okay. First and Second Kings, that's the chronology from the throne. First and Second Chronicles, that's the chronology that comes from the temple. Same history, but it's from, from a different source. If you're found in Chronicles, that's a good thing. That's, to be, like, that's like being found in the book of life. 
these, all these guys, Mushi and Mali, they're in there. References to them is in there. Amazing. Amazing. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is it. There it is. God says, this is it's his. He's going to get the glory. Of, the Gersh, of Gershon was the family of the Libnites and the family of the Shemites. These are the families of the Gershonites. Okay, so he tells us, these were numbered of them according to the number of all males from a month old and upward. Even those that were number of them were 7,500. So this is, this is what numbers all about. So look what he says. The families of the Gershonites shall pitch in the tabernacle westward. And the chief of the house of the father of the Gershonites shall be Eliaphat Seth. So that's a, that's a godly name. God is gatherer. That's where they're going to camp. Behind the tabernacle. Remember there was about a thousand yards around where nobody could camp around there. Around the tabernacle except these people. These people are special. We are special. We have such a high privilege. We can go near unto God. We Christians. And, and the charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent, the covering thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hangings of the court, and the curtain of the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about, and the courts of it for all the service thereof. This is what they're going to be in charge of. They're going to be charged over the coverings. Remember, there were four coverings over the whole tabernacle. The, the, the linen, uh, the beautiful linen with all the, uh, the, all the uh, gold rings. That was theirs. And so the, the, the badger, I mean, the, 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 the goat skin, and then the, uh, the ram skin dyed red, and then the badger skins. All those coverings, they were in charge of that. The hanging of the door, all that went into that. And uh, it says the hanging of the cord. Yeah, I imagine all the, all the linen that, was, that went around to make that fence, that went around that. That was theirs. The curtain for the door, which is by the tabernacle. This is, and the cords, all, this, all the ropes, all that, that was theirs. And that's what went around the tabernacle. They weren't, notice how meticulous God is about concerning every little detail. That was theirs. And then he says, and the Kohathites, or the, and, and of Kohath uh, was the family of the Aramites, and the family of the Issacharites, and the family of the Harmonites, uh, Hebronites, and the family of the Uselites. These are the families of the Kohathites. Now this gets really interesting here, folks. And the number of all the males from the month old and upward were 8,600, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. God says, okay, now we get to Kohath. Look where they're going to camp out. And the family of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle south, southward. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathites shall be Elathaph, Eli, Eliasaph fan of the son of Uziel. 7,500 people. And that's, they're camping on the south side. Okay? That's, that's their place. And their charge shall be the ark. This is, this is kind of nice. And the table and the candlestick and the altars and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they, they minister and the hanging and all the service thereof. Now look at this. He says, the ark. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't you like to be in charge of that? That's the highest thing. You'd be in charge of carrying that? Wow. 
The Kohathites are in charge of that. And the table, whoa. And the candlestick, that's their, that's, they carry that. And the altars, there were two of them. The incense altar the, and the brazen altar. And the vessels, it doesn't mention by name, but uh, I don't know what that means, but you have the labor and the foot, it's base. I think that's part of the vessels. It says all these things, notice how they had poles, you, you have to carry them. You have to carry these. And the hangings, the veil, wow. We hear about that in the New Testament, how that was ripped from top to bottom. This is, the Kohathites were in charge of this. Folks, now watch this. When they dedicated the tabernacle, there were six wagons given to the Levites. From Israel, they gave them six wagons and 12 oxen. The Gershonites got two wagons. He says, oh, there's six wagons, so everybody should get two wagons, right? It's only right. I mean, when you talk to your little sisters, they says, mom gave us this candy, and I'm supposed to split it up before all three of us, okay? So I did, I did the dividing because I was the older one, and I always got the bigger piece, you know? It's just the way it worked. But when you look at this, you figure, okay, two wagons go to the Gershonites, and, but six Two wagons go to the Gershonites and four wagons go to the Marianites. The Gershonites get no wagons. They get no wagons. Remember how David got in trouble for that? Because they put the Ark of God in a wagon? They shouldn't have done that. That's why Uzzah died. But they get no wagon. And I think, folks, we're going to see that. We're going to see that as we continue on in, in, in Numbers. That's going to be a bone of contention because these people are going to rebel. This is Jesus. Jesus is all this. He is the law. He's the perfect Lamb of God. He's the one that kept the law perfectly. He is the light of the world. He is. He is the bread of life. He is the living water. He is our advocate and He is our sacrifice. All these instruments. That's who he is. He is that. And these people, I believe the Kohathites, it's going to become too heavy for them. Because they don't have a wagon. Look what it says here. This is found. We're going to be looking at this later on. Number 61. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, took men and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes against Moses and against Aaron, seeing all the co congregation are holy, every one of them. Wherefore, lift, wherefore then lift ye up yourselves. They went up against Moses and, and, and Aaron and questioned their authority. We're going to see what happened. Awful. These, I believe this had something to do with them because they got tired of dr carrying that through the desert. They weren't supposed to carry it for more than 11 days, but they remember they didn't go into the land, so they wound up going around the desert for 38 more years. And this became a problem for them. But this shows us something, folks. First Corinthians 4, 7 says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This Jesus, the spirit of Jesus is in us. And some of us get tired or weary of carrying him. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And so, am I weary in well-doing? Is that what happens? After a while, I mean, people give up. I mean, many, I've been in the Christian faith long enough to see people fall by the wayside. They stop coming to church. They go back to the world. They become demises. They go back to the world. This is, nah, that, this thing, you know, it's... Every day manna, every day the same thing, and they get weary. But this is what happened to them. This is a warning that were written for our admonition. And notice, if you can only wait, look at the next verse, look what it says. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, shall be chief over the chief 
over the chief of the Levites and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. They have somebody over them, one of the priests, one of the son's priests, Eleazar, and look what his name means. God is helper. He'll help us. He's going, he's going to have the oversight. He's going to help us. Because these things, these things are burdens, folks. These things that you're going to be carrying, these are burdens. He'll have the oversight of them, the, sanctuary, the sacred things. These are sacred, and they, it became heavy for them. But these are burdens. God says, I will help you carry them. What burdens are those? Folks, to be holy, to be light, to give ourselves for others, to, to intercede, to be a witness, to be a, a living sacrifice. Remember, it's easy to die for Jesus, but it's more difficult to be a living sacrifice, day in, day out. They, shall, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's what they were given. I mean, they were to carry these things, but God was going to be with them. He was going to help them. That's what Elasar means. He was going to help them. He was over them. Uh, let's see if we can cover this quickly. And uh, Mary uh, was the family of the Melites and the family of the Mushites. These are the families of Ma Merari. So they will camp now. And those that were number of them, according to the number of the males from a month old and upward, were 6,200. And these, and the chief of the house of the family of the family Samarite was Zuriel, the son of Abahel. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. So these are on the north side. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serveth thereunto. So no wonder they were given four wagons. You know that those boards, there were 48 boards, and those boards were like 15 feet tall. There were, I don't know, I mean, I wanna say they were about three inches thick. They were 27 inches white. You know, they were heavy. Not only were they inlaid and covered with gold, these boards must have been heavy. So they, of course, they had, and then look at all, all the pillars and all the sockets, all the silver sockets, the bars, long bars, all that, that's, that was their carrying. So they were given four wagons. That means a whole lot of other things. I mean, the Bible is so deep, folks. It's got so much stuff. But it tells you how God is meticulous concerning the job that each one of us has in the church. Each one has a job. You know, what I do in this church here is so different from, from what Brother Roland does. But if you're around Brother Roland, his mind works in a different way. You know, he's always thinking in a different way. He's looking at things that I hadn't thought of that. Of course, there's no way I can think of things like that because I'm not like, built like that. It's God's meticulous way of showing us, I know what I'm doing, trust me, you know? So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to stop there and uh, come back and continue there. Let's, let's pray. Lord God, ma maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen. Lord, thank you for the book of Numbers and for what, Lord, how you selected us from before we were born, you knew about us, and you, Lord, you have called us. Help us to fulfill their purpose, and Lord, help us also now to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We give you the praise, the Lord, and the honor, for beside you there is no God. Amen. Good, good. And you have 15, 12 minutes.